Hey everyone, this time I'm doing something a little different. Um, the, like, I, like I said in my last video, the new set, uh, Tyrant or Flame of the Tyrant, recently came out. Like, you know, literally two days ago or a day ago. And um, I did a bunch of pack openings, but now I want to kind of go over, like, just the most, what I, who, what I think are the best cards in the set. Like, you know, um, the cards that are going to have the most influence in PvP or in deck building, you know. And, and it's interesting because. The two ultra rares in this, the two ultra rares in this mini set, because it's a mini set, the way it has less cards than your normal sets. The two ultra rares are really not that impressive. Um, in the grand scheme of things, you know, like Tyrant Dragon's just a big guy, and he's whatever, you know. And then the card is just kind of whatever. But there's actually there's a few there's a few super rares and a few like or secret rares and a few normal rares that are just really decent, and I want to go over them. Um, this is like a top five list. These are not listed in uh, any particular. They're like they're not they're not listed in how good they are. They're just listed like you know in whatever order I took the picture. So let's go. First one up is Iron Blacksmith. Uh, this is a this is gonna be this is gonna be an interesting card because it's it's you know of course it's got weak stats. It's a flip effect monster. You have to actually your opponent actually has to attack it or you have to flip it. They just destroy it with some. Well, no, it still flips if they destroy it. But there's there are, there will be situations where you won't be able to get this off. But when you do, it's pretty cool because you can get any equipment from your deck. It added to your hand. And I've played a lot of card games, and uh, I've played like you know I've played a lot of card games over the years. Being able to tutor for something, you know, being able to search your deck for a particular card and get it, is really really useful. And right now, the Yu-Gi-Oh card game or the Duel Links doesn't have that many cards that really help you get things from your deck, especially not equipped. So, and the cool thing about equipments is, you can like you can put you can put like three or four you know equipments that are like situational or have like kind of like tactical use and you can make like a toolbox deck you can like you could you could put your um, shooting star bow in there so if you need to lower somebody's attack down or if you need to hit directly you can put the you can put black pin in there if you need a little bit of direct damage um, you can you can even get you can even get like really kind of like uh, tech cards like um, what's oh, I can't figure the name of it but the one that you pay 1500 life points and you get a monster from your opponent's graveyard that's a equip card so you can search for that with this it's it's got some interesting uses. So up next we have um, uh, I'm not gonna say his name. War the this is a weird has 17 attacks, 16 defense. It's a four drop. A very very plain Jane vanilla card. But in in the current meta of this game, 17 beaters kind of reign supreme. Um, the only thing that really beats these 17 beaters is like I mean Jerry Beansman. Yeah. But, and this guy, what makes this guy so special is that he, well, A, he's a warrior, which there's a lot more support for warriors than there is other, the other creature types. Like, there's a lot more support for warriors than there are for plants or for um, beast warriors. But, but B, he's a rare, which means he's a lot easier to get than Jerry Beans, man. He's a lot easier to get than Beast Raider or Axe Raider. He's a lot easier to get than uh, Battle Ox. You know, he's just, he's going to be a lot easier to get. You know, you can, you can probably buy a handful of packs and probably get at least one so that that's you know he's gonna be a big thing like he's he's probably one of the easiest probably the easy he's probably the easiest best card to get in this set next up we have golden apples this card is a little tricky it's um it's really good but it's um it requires you to have no monsters on the board and which can sometimes set you up for failure but most of the time it's gonna be really useful you know, whenever you take battle damage, you can, you're able to gain much life back, and then you make a token. So this card gives you a lot of value. It gives you, it gives, it can keep, it can give you a bunch of life gain, and it can also uh, give you a big ass token. So this is really cool. And the bigger your, the bigger the damage you're taking, the bigger the token is gonna be. So you know, think about, think about decks like the Blue Eyes on the Dragon deck. I mean, this would be great against that. All right, next up, we have um, Warm Worm. Now most people. It probably wouldn't be the like, one of the best cards in the set, but the the fact and it, and it probably wouldn't be if this was a normal Yu-Gi-Oh. But the fact that this is dual links and we only have 20 card. Well, most people who are playing competitively only have 20 card decks. This is a good card. You run three of these. That's a uh, nine cards. That's a, you know that's a good portion of their deck right there. And you know throughout the course of the game they're going to draw cards and then you know, if you and you, if you sorry about that and if you play this in like an installing deck you could. 
easily I can see this card being really useful and then if you have ways to bring it back like sh shallow grave um, you know if you run like free shallow graves and three of these that could be really annoying <laughs> so yeah I can see this card this is the, I can see this card being the beginning of possible mill decks um, we'll just have to see how it plays out you know what kind of other cards they bring in for it and then our last card I want to talk about is uh, the combustible collective this is a this is a really good card, guys. Um, you know we've you know you, you might you might say it's got zero defense, which is a, a drawback. But as we all know, Jerry Beansman reigns supreme, and he's got zero defense, so that's not that big of a, a, a downside. I mean, yeah, if you're forced to be if you're forced to be defensive, it's going to be a downside. But this card usually mean, if you have this card, it usually means you're in the, you're you're being aggressive because it's like the most aggressive creature. It's like the most aggressive four drop I can think of right now. This means he's got 2,000 attack. That is really good, and you can you can tribute up two pyro monsters to gain a thousand attack for each. So if you have a pyro debt, you can just slam this. You can just go all out and just make this guy huge. Plus, he also has piercing damage. So that means this guy, like say you're attacking like a little, I don't know, say a little 500 defense. So you're attacking with this guy, you're gonna do like 1500 points of damage to that thing. That's good. I mean, piercing damage on top of high attack for a level four, plus the possible ability to pump him up. It's really good. Like I would try to get this card as much as possible. It is good. But. That's it. That's it for my uh, my picks for the best cards in the set. Um, I mean, there's, there's probably there's a few other cards that are pretty cool, but these are the five that I think are gonna have a, that would have the biggest influence. You know, that do a lot of stuff. So, hey, thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned and check it out.